During the late Cretaceous, giant theropods dominated the land throughout the world uncontested. Yet in the oceans and seas, another group were ruling with an iron fist and were the real behemoths of the Cretaceous, the Mosasaurs. They were marine reptiles that grew to giant sizes and were highly adapted to thrive. They built one of the strongest dynasties the world has yet to know and did so at lightning speed, causing mayhem in every corner of prehistoric Earth. However, despite eventually becoming the lords of the late Cretaceous, the Mosasaurs came from humble beginnings. Many paleontologists believe that it started with a family of semi-aquatic lizards, known as the Agilosauridae, which first appeared roughly 99 million years ago in Europe. They lived around the shallow marine environments of the prehistoric Tethys Ocean and probably spent most of the day on land. And unlike their eventual descendants, they were rather small, being no more than a few feet or meters in length, preying on small fish, lizards, and possibly amphibians, a far cry from the legendary diets of the eventual Mosasaurs. And for millions of years, the Agilosauridae remained relatively unchanged as when this group of lizards first emerged, they were limited by the fact that the waters already had not one, but two dominant forces, the short-necked pliosaurs and the dolphin-like ichthyosaurs. Both groups were diversified and had large predatory members that resulted in the top of the food chain being rather tight, offering little space for newcomers. And because the ancestors of mosasaurs were much smaller, they could not compete. Yet, they didn't have to, as luckily for them, 90 million years ago, give or take a few, both the pliosaurs and ichthyosaurs vanished. There have been many ideas on what happened, some suggesting that the two had been struggling for a long time. And recently, one conjecture that has gained a lot of traction proposes that something caused dissolved oxygen to be depleted in the oceans, leading to what is now called the Bonarelli extinction event, which possibly resulted in the eradication of both groups, either directly or indirectly. With the loss of two important members of the food chain, a major gap was formed, and the Agilosauridae were determined to be the first to capitalize on it, and capitalize they did. The lack of the previously abundant predators allowed them to return to the ocean for good and rapidly evolve into what became the Mosasaurs. Among many changes, their hands and feet became flippers, their tails became powerful tools of locomotion, and most importantly, they got huge. So huge that it was more likely than not that a new Mosasaur genus would measure over 4 meters or 12 feet in length, and a few got extremely massive, highlighted by the world record holder for the largest Mosasaur on public display, Bruce, a Tylosaurus who, based on his remains, is believed to have reached 13.1 meters or 43 feet in length. And with the increase in size and overall diversity, the Mosasaurs were able to become the top marine predators in just 25 million years, a shockingly short amount of time compared to how long it took other marine reptiles to reach a similar status. And by the end of it all, the Mosasaurs had 42 members that combined had a strong presence worldwide. However, the substantial size of the average Mosasaur was not the only reason why they were able to quickly take over every environment, as actually one of their strengths was that there was a wide range in stature, with the smallest being just 1 meter or 3.3 feet long. This let them infiltrate every niche, some of which even included freshwater habitats, as indicated by an 84 million year old mosasaur that was located in freshwater sediments. And along with their size range, another key tool was their teeth. Across the group, the teeth differed and were quite specialized, meaning that nearly every animal in the ocean was in their sights. Larger mosasaurs had sharp and robust teeth designed for taking down bigger prey, allowing them to become apex predators. While smaller members had teeth better suited for smaller creatures, and a few like low bidens had even more unique teeth, as its were blunt and rounded, an indication that it likely consumed shelled animals by crushing them. Additionally, another advantage that mosasaurs had was their jaws, which were double hinged and exceedingly flexible, letting them swallow many prey nearly whole, somewhat like a snake. And a few mosasaurs Mosasaurs had even more adapted jaws. Well, more so snouts, as seen with the Tylosaurus, which had an upper snout that was very bony and void of teeth, leading paleontologists to believe that it used its head as a battering ram to batter both prey and other carnivores. All these new evolutionary traits, which started with a plain aquatic lizard, made the Mosasaurs unstoppable, and their influence was so intense at the end of the Cretaceous that occasionally when a member entered a new environment, a complete turnover in the fauna would occur. And 
and for the last 20 million years of the Cretaceous, the Mosasaurs were the sole rulers of the seas and oceans, and it actually appears that they only got stronger as time progressed, as during their very final days, many of the largest members to ever live coexisted with each other, including the Mosasaurus, Tylosaurus, and the Prognathodon, a travesty for all the other ocean dwellers. At this point, they were also more numerous and widespread than even the T-Rex, but sadly, just as sudden as their reign started, it ended. And to add insult to injury, their fall from grace was accompanied by two ironies, because two things that helped them become kings ended up coming full circle. For starters, just as an extinction had originally helped them, a sudden extinction event in the form of a giant asteroid did the opposite. In a second, it killed scores of them, and the rest quickly succumbed to its effects, as no Mosasaur has been found past the Cretaceous boundary. However, during the collision, the second irony was found in their size. The large sizes of certain Mosasaurs had allowed them to become apex predators, yet their massive structures ended up being a nuance in the KT extinction events, as larger animals had a harder time coping, highlighted by the fact that no tetrapod over 55 pounds or 25 kilograms survived. And sadly for the Mosasaurs, none of the living members at the time were even close to that weight threshold, and thus their sudden rise to fame ended just as abruptly. 